Hello everyone and welcome to a new semester of The Buzz. This week's episode is full of Disney drama, movie drama, and all the things that make Twitter go round. I'm your host Rachel Mangan and joining me are panelists Lindsay Stanger and Andrew Sloboda. Stay tuned, you're watching The Buzz. Don't worry, the 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. We're going to start out with the biggest breakup of the year thus far, and that's when Sony decided to leave the deal they had with Disney and take everyone's favorite web slinger with them. The thing about it that made it the most shocking was the fact that Spider-Man Far From Home set up Spidey to be the centerpiece of the new Phase 4 storyline. Marvel fans were overjoyed when Sony announced they renegotiated a new deal to share Spider-Man with Disney yet again. The New Deal agrees to share the character for two more movies while also agreeing to renegotiate after those movies are completed. Sony has been hard at work at developing their own movie universe of Spider-Man characters with the idea of Spider-Man being split between the two universes. The untitled Spider-Man 3 is slated to release July of 2021 shared between Disney and Sony. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with more entertainment news here on The Buzz. Can I help you? Oh, I'm depression. I've come for you. What? <laughs> depression. You know, the thing that makes people angry. I keep them up at night. Oh, I give them anxiety. You know, I get up on the, their heads. That's crazy. crazy. I know. The, the government likes to think that I'm a mental illness. Well, then shouldn't you be wearing a cape? <laughs> Why? So people could see me coming? No, I've got 12.6% of American college students already. There's no one I can't get. For more information, visit www.acha.org. Staying in the realm of comic book movies, the new Joker movie is stirring up a lot of controversy, especially across social media. The movie is rated R, and as many people have stated, it has that rating for a reason. It is not meant for kids. The movie features incredibly harsh language and a ton of violence. Families of the Dark Knight Rises movie theater shooting that occurred back in 2012 are suing because they believe it is romanticizing violence, among other things. For years now, the question of if violent movies and or video games will incite violence in young youth still remains. The upcoming Joker movie has been on FBI Watch, but why? The Joker movie is the spin-off of the Batman movie, and remember what happened in Aurora, Colorado at the premiere showing of the Batman movie in 2012? For those who don't, a man opened fire in a Century 16 movie theater, killing 12 people and injuring over 70. It was a dark day for our country, and it struck fear into the lives of many. Just the idea that someone, something as simple as going to the movie theater could be the last thing you do is heartbreaking. Fast forward to 2019, and the U.S. military is on high alert. According to an email that the FBI social media monitoring has picked up on some clues that hint at a possible repeat of history. The alert was warned by the public to possible threats of the theaters around the country. As of now, the military is on high alert and is taking precautions in hopes that they will not have to step in. We've got more on Twitter after this. Social media, it's where we go when we're bored, when we're looking for news or entertainment or just to pass the time. We're jumping down the Twitter rabbit hole. It's time for our tweets of the week. I'm going to start out with mine and I'm going to say we use the teleprompters a lot here in the studio so you're going to understand in a second why I identify with it. So it starts out me. 
reading the word debuted. Okay, we practiced this. We know the T is silent. Here we go. My brain beaming proudly, debuted. Because sometimes you see a word and your mind just kind of goes blank and you don't remember how to read. It's fine. On Tuesday, October 1st, Lady Gaga tweeted out that she plans to name her next album Adele. Speculations occur that it is a joke, but regardless, it became a trend on Twitter. Lady Gaga has been teasing her new album all year, and everyone, including myself, is highly anticipating the release. What even is the name Jonathan? Be John or be Nathan. You don't get to be both. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with commentary. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. You've heard a little bit about Spider-Man and a little bit about Joker. Is there anything else on your minds that we need to talk about? Well, for me, the biggest thing that I want to talk about is the fact that Big Mouth Season 3 comes out this weekend. And even though it's highly controversial and rather vulgar, I'm very excited because I enjoy the show. That's all I have. Well, SNL is on its 45th season, and I have mixed feelings about it. I have always enjoyed the idea of roasting people and the funny skits that go along with it. But go ahead and tell me that SNL has not just become a huge political mockery. You can't tell me otherwise because it is. SNL has been a political dating back until 1975, making light of the dullness that is the political world. Okay, that makes sense. But since 2016, there has been over 97 skits specifically targeting the Republican Party, and about 76 of those have been viewed in a negative light. This not even including the campaign skits, which wouldn't be that big of a deal if the numbers weren't so lopsided. In the eight years Barack Obama was in office, SNL had a little over 100 political skits, and 45, which poked fun at the president. Trump has only been in the office for a little over three years, and the number is almost the same as the Barack Obama's entire eight-year term. Come on now. <laughs> Honestly, it breaks my heart because SNL has created some of the most amazing careers such as Tina Fey, Steve Carell, Robert Downey Jr., Andy Samberg, and so many talented comedians, which is why I want so badly to love SNL, but lately I feel like I've been watching CNN. Well, I have to talk about the fact that I hated almost every second of it chapter two because you, you go in and I don't part of it's because I don't like scary movies so I get it but I thought well the first one was scary usually the sequel is always worse in terms of quality so I thought there's no way that movie was so graphic and so violent that I I need a break I felt like I needed to go watch 10 Disney movies afterward just to feel better <laughs> but we're finished with our commentary now. We're gonna move ahead in. Discussion is coming up next here on The Buzz. When you're out there, there's no telling what you'll find. I see it, I see it. Oh, look at you. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to The Buzz. You know, we talked about our tweet of the week. We talked about the Joker, and we talked about Spider-Man. Now we're going to dive in just a little bit deeper. So does anyone have some groundbreaking information that they want to start with? Uh, it's not groundbreaking, but I just want to talk about the fact that I called it with Spider-Man, Sony, and Disney. When it first uh, became a problem and they broke up for the first time, broke up, it sounds like they're like a boy band. When they broke <laughs> apart yeah. and they weren't able to renegotiate, I personally said, they'll be back. They'll be back. And everyone was like, no, they won't. And I was like, yes, they will. Well, they kind of have to because when has Sony ever showed that they can be responsible with a really good superhero character? So they kind of have to go limping back to Disney with their tail tucked between their legs because they've already ruined Spider-Man once. Right, part of me, they're going twice, for two times. twice technically. Oh, they're going for they, a repeat. I think personally it was all planned 
I think because the reason they broke apart the first time, I don't know if you guys knew. Wait, was, was this like a publicity stunt? What do you mean? I'm thinking As it in, was. Oh, okay. So uh, the original reason that they broke apart was for the fact that Disney wanted to help fund the movie, but then also split the profits more. So originally Disney was only making 5%. They wanted to make 50. Dis uh, Sony said no, so then they like scrapped the whole thing. This new deal, they get 25% while they're also funding 25% of the movie. But I think it was literally just a publicity stunt in order to get people surrounded around the fact that this movie exists. Not only this movie, but Sony's movies that they're making as well. I think it was a huge publicity stunt. And I it probably it, worked. Yeah, I like think it, it worked. seems like it worked. It was, it's been trending on Twitter. For how long has this been? Like, it's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, so it originally broke loose at D23, Disney's own conference. Uh, back in August, yeah, it was August like or September, over the summer. Yeah. and it was trending on Twitter. Then it was trending on Instagram, Facebook, every every news it's still media going. Like, outlet. It's still trending. Yeah, and, it's and then they came back it. to the table, and it's been trending ever since again. So I think it it worked. See, but here's Definitely. the thing that gets me is I still have no more interest in Sony doing superhero movies than I did before. Because you have no trust. I don't you trust don't them. Yeah, them. they have not shown that they can be responsible with a superhero. So that's fair. Like, even if they came out with their own, like, alternate Spider-Man universe like they're talking about, mm -hmm. I have very low expectations. Into mm -hmm. the Spider-Verse is a totally different thing because it was a very well-made animated movie. That was phenomenal. Yeah. But you put a real person in a Spider-Man costume and you hand them to Sony, even and Tom Hall, like, you can, only, you can only do so good with the script and what you're given to work with. It doesn't necessarily yeah. matter because I liked all the Spider-Man actors, but the writing is just Awful. Who do you think was the best Spider-Man? It's or tough. To a, a it's another tough political thing. Because I think that Tom Holland has had the best stuff to work with. So I think it makes him look better than the other Spider-Mans. But I wasn't a... I think that... But didn't they all, If you don't didn't say Tony McGuire, I will Well, fight here's, you here's the thing. They right all now. played Spider-Man very differently. Yeah. Like, yeah, one played Andrew really Garfield good, played and the, the dorky, awkward Spider-Man. He was so cute, though. Like, and then so Tom crazy. Holland <laughs> plays like this <laughs> innocent, <laughs> this this like innocent little Spider-Man that just doesn't. Which know. I mean, I guess is not necessarily what you want in a superhero to be innocent and adorable. He was supposed to be a nerd, but he was like way cooler than than the jocks. Let's talk about that for a hot second. Okay. Andrew Garfield okay. was like, yeah, I skateboard and do cool tricks, but I'm a nerd because I like photography, like. <laughs> I'm sorry. Again, what did you just he do? He was way ahead of his time when it came to the whole like hipster movement, you know? Because like back then they were like, no, I don't write skateboards, and then I also have a photography page. Like, <laughs> yeah, like go check out my blog, please. <laughs> I'm now <laughs> Pinterest. Okay, oh, yes. so we're gonna switch it up a little bit. We're gonna head over now to Joker. Mmm, violence. We love that. No, we do not like so that. So where, where, where are thoughts lying in terms of this movie? I don't like the idea that we have glorified violence so heavily lately. But have we? Have we? Well, Is this any worse than any other action thriller movie? No. Yes. No. Yes, it this is. This is so oh much gosh. more... There's a lot more emotion and psychological thriller type violence to this movie. Like Deadpool was incredibly violent, but Deadpool was a comedy. Like you know yeah. not to take Deadpool seriously, but you have to understand that there are people out there that really do like they're sociopaths that think like yeah. this Joker character is. And back when the Aurora shooting happened, the shooter claimed I was inspired by the Joker. So here we're putting out this, it's almost like a fantasy. A glorifying it's movie. It's a fantasy biopic of this psychopath. Yeah. So I'm very disturbed that they're making this movie. I'm very concerned about what could happen and yeah. the audiences that are exposed to it. Not only that, but the idea is that I remember reading on some article and one of my professors and I were even talking about it the other day that Joker identifies as being in, in celibate which is like, they call themselves incels. I think it's something along those lines. Don't quote me on that. But I do remember a lot of like people on the dark web relate to that idea of being incelibate. And so it's like, if we're glorifying a man who is claiming to be incelibate, doesn't that just also allow them like a To broader... think that they'll get a movie yeah, made out of them? Yeah, they'll, they'll allow themselves to just be glorified by that. And I don't think that's well, right. Well, the other thing too is that it's, the the big thing that's trending right now is anti heroes. So they've been they did it with Maleficent, but Maleficent is a totally different scope. Like Iron Man is technically an anti hero 
because he was a drunk and he was not yeah. very stable. But that's different. Where now you're getting into the realm of like something that is very real and very scary, and you're trying to portray them as an anti-hero because who knows what you could be encouraging at this point. Yeah, it's literally showcasing a descent into madness. And the movie talks about that, and critics alike have said that the movie was well done and that the acting was phenomenal, but at the same time, it heavily promotes soci sociopaths and psychological issues. Do you think they're, like, they might be trying to bring a little bit of horror into it and they're just running out of ideas of how to make things like good over the edge, you know what I mean? I think they're, I think honestly, in order to get original content, I think they're a like lot of movies the, yeah, are trying to go way deeper than they need to be. Yeah. And I think this one just took a little bit of a wrong turn. I definitely agree with that. Now we're gonna switch over real quick over to our tweets. Any further reason as to why that was your tweet of the week? Um, yeah, I opened up Twitter yesterday and I literally saw that Lady Gaga tweeted like four words. My next album is Adele, in quotes. And, and I was like, like huh? Excuse me, let's talk about that. I I don't think she's honestly gonna name her album Adele. I think that would be way too mocking and also Adele probably has copyrights to her, her own name. Actual name. Yeah. yeah. So I doubt she could even if she wanted to. What if she spells to. it different? Like you know like the Dell computer? A period Dell. <laughs> I mean it's way It's just it. about a computer. <laughs> the whole album is just talking about her old like two thousand six computer. How she got her going. Oh All my right. god. Right. What about yours, Lindsay? I mean, mine was just Thought I thought it was funny. No one else has thought it's funny since then. Like I keep telling people, and they're just like, "Yeah, you're dumb." And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> Sorry. All right. Well, again, I picked mine because teleprompters, and sometimes I can't read. Speaking of reading, thank you all for joining us for the first episode of the semester. We hope you enjoyed the show, and as always, don't forget to come back and see what's buzzing. This has been a production of Waynesburg Community Television.